All right, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Interacting with the Internet. Uh, part one is a two part class. We have uh, part one, which is just going to go off uh, Internet. We're going to talk about Internet privacy. And then part two, which is two days from now, it's on Thursday, is going to be on uh, Internet security. All right. So I'll drop right into it since we had a, so that delay. Uh, oops. I didn't mean to go that far. Uh, so we're going to talk about internet privacy, online privacy. Uh, online privacy refers to information revealed about a user on the internet and who can access and control that information. So it's like uh, more or less we're talking about information on the internet, uh, mostly your information on the internet. When you use the internet, your information is out there in some capacity, not necessarily like, oh, what do you mean? Is it, you know, if I have never used the internet before and I use Google, do people know my, you know, social security number? Well, no, but right is pretty much if you're using the internet, there is information about you that is going to start existing just from you using the internet. And so I'll get into that. Uh, many people who use the internet are unaware who has access to this information and uh, what information they're providing and who's receiving it. So we're going to cover all those topics. Uh, information on the internet. The internet's an extremely helpful resource with infinite knowledge. Yes, very good. Uh, I'm probably not infinite, but pretty near infinite. You could go on the internet and find pretty much anything. Uh, uh, on every single topic you could think of, uh, and of course, it's incredibly helpful, or at least I would like to think it's incredibly helpful. It's, it's a pretty good source for some stuff. And you might not want to trust like somebody on Facebook saying something about something, but and, you know, Wikipedia is not super helpful, but I mean, you can find, you know, information on government websites, organization websites, you know, they got actual, you know, you can look at like the Webster Dictionary. There's a bunch of great resources on the internet. It's, it's pretty helpful. It's almost like a whole, like a, like a whole library on, on Google. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, Google and Yahoo are examples of search engines where you can find the answer for almost any question. Uh, the internet's a good place to connect with other people and share information from one user to another. I'm sure a lot of people have Facebook or Twitter. Very nice. A lot of people don't have Facebook or Twitter. Usually, if people don't have Facebook or Twitter, it's because of internet privacy. They, oh, I don't want a Facebook account or I don't want a Twitter account. I don't want to put my information out there. I don't want people to be able to look me up. I don't want to give out my uh, information. So a lot of people, it is a concern for them. They don't want, they don't want, it's a privacy factor. They don't want to be out there for people to see. And uh, we could talk about how, yeah, that's true. If you're, if you have a Facebook account, your information is now out there, but not necessarily all your information and maybe not the information that you would think, even if you're aware, if you have a Facebook account and you're like, oh, I don't care about people being able to see my information or, oh, I have my posts are private. So only my friends could see it. There's still information that people can see uh, and there's information that Facebook uses that you might not know exists. Uh, the internet, yeah. So uh, uh, what, what else is there? You can find friends on Facebook, Twitter, or any video on YouTube. Yeah, uh, some people feel like they have to get like a, not have to, but it's pretty convincing to get like a social media account. I mean, like, why wouldn't you? Maybe you have, at least for me, like I, I went to school back in high school with all these people and I probably haven't seen 98% of any of those people in years. Uh, and it's cool that I can like, I can every so often, I, I have a Facebook account, I see them on Facebook. I'm like, oh, that's cool. How is this person doing? I can go on his account and go, oh, this person's working for, you know, is this person's working for NASA. Wow, I never expected this person that I went to school with eight years ago to be working for NASA. That's cool. And then of course that piques my interest. I can add them, talk to them. Oh, what's, what's with this? You're working for NASA. What happened? That's, you know, and it's, it's cool. You get, you get to make that kind of connection and without Facebook uh, and without other social media, that's something that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily be able to do. And so it's, it's really cool. Social media is, you know, more than just sharing cat pictures with your friends. It's, it's like actually pretty cool. You're able to connect with people. And if it's not reconnecting with people that you, you know, knew in the past, it could be meeting new people. 
or it could be something simple. Some people just use like Facebook and I hate to keep using Facebook as an example, but you could even use Twitter as a uh, means to get information from like businesses. Uh, I wanna go to like the Orland Park Bakery. Uh, maybe I don't know where the location is. Sure, I can Google it, but if, I'm, if I have like a, a Facebook app on my phone or I go on Facebook, I can look up the Orland Bakery's Facebook page and it'll say, their business hours and their contact information and their address on their Facebook page. And I could read people's reviews and be like, you know, and since they have a Facebook page, I can look at the comments on their page and people that have been there will be like, oh, you got to get this, you know, donut from the bakery. And then I'll go there and I'll know where it is, when they're open and even what donuts or, you know, what stuff to buy at the bakery. That's pretty cool. So it gives you more, it gives you information. Uh, and that's pretty much social media is just connecting people together and then sharing information. And so that's pretty cool. Search engines is just giving you, you know, you type in any question or any person or any object or anything, and you can find pretty much five, like five billion sources of information for any one subject and it gives it to you in like half a second. So search engines are awesome and social media is pretty awesome. Uh, the information companies want. So when you're using Facebook or when you're using uh, Google or you know any of these uh, you know social media uh, platforms uh, or uh, search engines, uh, the information you typing the question on the so on, on the search engine on Google, or you making a post on Facebook, that information is stored somewhere digitally. Uh, you look up, let's say you look up, I don't know, what time is the sunrise tomorrow? Uh, which would you would think is worthless information, you know, five days after that, it's like, okay, well, why does it, why does it matter what time the sunrise was, you know, a day in the past? But even something like that, that information, what is 347 divided by 18? You put, you put that into Google for some reason. I don't know why you wouldn't use a calculator, but you don't have a calculator handy, but you have Google handy. You put that, that information of you looking that up is stored somewhere in a server saying that you looked that up on this date at this time. All right. And whether you have a Google account or you don't have an account, you just went on to google.com. You just, you just went to google.com and typed something in. The device that you are using to search it on and that instance of whatever web browser you're using, whether it's Internet, Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Google Chrome, Safari, if you're on a Mac, uh, doesn't matter what it is. It has its own kind of like identifier. It's got its own like, uh, it's you have in your internet service provider gives you a, you have an IP address and the instance of your Chrome open kind of has its own identifier where it's like kind of its own entity that Google will recognize. It's like, oh, Google Chrome from this IP address at this location looked this up on this day. And chances are you don't use Google one time ever to look up when the sun rises and never use it ever again, you probably use it quite a bit. And it's not just Google, you could use uh, Yahoo, you could be using Bing, any search engine, uh, or almost any search engine anyway. Uh, and uh, you look all this stuff up. And uh, basically what these companies will start doing is they'll save all the information of all the things you look up and they know that it's specifically you, they might not know who you are, uh, unless you have an account and you you know, put in your personal information, in which case they do know who you are. But once they gather enough information, they could kind of piece together where you live and what your name is and who you are. And it's like, well, why would they do that? And what do they actually do? They actually do that? Yes, they do. That's actually what they do. They will take every single bit of information that you use from search engines and they will they'll start piecing together who you are, what your interests are and what you do. Uh, it's typically referred to as profiling. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of scary and it's not necessarily people doing it because people would do that very slow and a lot of people use Google. So they have a bunch of supercomputers that do it for them at you know, instantaneous speeds. Uh, it's, it's, and they spend a lot of money on it, which is why, uh, you know, and they, they make a lot of money off it as well. 
And it's like, how could they make a, how could they make money just storing and getting information about me? And that's where this quote comes in. You see this quote, when the product is free, you are the product. That's a quote that's uh, it's accredited to a lot of different people. Uh, I'm not sure who said it for uh, first. Uh, I, I really tried to look up like, man, where's this quote coming from? There's like a movie and a TV show that used it a long time ago. There's a book, an author that probably it should be credited to. I forgot his name. I did remember it and I did want to mention him, uh, but it was, that was, a, was like half a century ago. Uh, but that's, that's a quote that's very, very true when it comes to internet privacy. When the product is free, you are the product. So Google, free to use, you're the product. That's why. They can only make so much money selling Android, you know, phones and uh, I don't know. I don't know too many other physical things that Google sells, uh, but they don't sell too much stuff. And the, most people use them to look stuff up. And that's where all, most of their money comes from is selling your information. All right. So the information that they piece together and the profile that they make for you, they sell to other companies and that's how they make money. Uh, that's what Google does. That's what Microsoft does. That's what Apple does. That's what Facebook does. That's what Twitter does. That's pretty much what every big internet social media search engine company does. And that's how they've gotten as big as they are. Uh, places that you visit are typically owned by massive corporations, as I was saying, that sell your information for profit. Be aware of the kind of information that they sell and they give out. And so this might be for any of you that might have not really been totally aware of all that I'm saying, this might be a shock to you and you might be super blown away like, wait, whoa, this is, not you know, they're like profiling me and selling my information. Is this legal? Um, yes, it is. Kind of is. Sometimes it isn't. Uh, sometimes they sell or give away or take information that they're not allowed to, in which case there's usually a big class action lawsuit. They usually reach like a $2 billion settlement and not, you know, the lawyers will take 90% of the money and the rest is distributed to people who partook in the class action lawsuit, which of course, social media that they control, these are companies that control the media or have a large stake in news, you know, media, they'll downplay it, make sure that the class action suit kind of stays off the news. You'll never see it. You know, if somebody sues Facebook, which somebody is right now in the state of Illinois, uh, uh, Facebook is currently having a class action lawsuit. I think they're required to say that there is a class action lawsuit against them. And there are people that, uh, are affected and they're required to go out and reach the people that were affected by the class action lawsuit. A thing that they stole is they, uh, they were using facial recognition on selfies of people without their permission, which you're not allowed to do. And uh, that's obviously very scary because then they can like identify you. you. You take a picture of yourself and you put it on Facebook, they'll run it through a facial recognition scan and uh, the state of Illinois banned that kind of technology. You can't run facial recognition programs off of pictures of people on social media. The state of Illinois has banned corporations to be able to do that without explicitly asking a resident of Illinois, hey, we're just so you know, when you upload this picture, we're gonna you know, probably use it to run some sort of facial recognition scan. And we're going to store that information for our own purposes or sell it to other companies or you know, give it to the government for something. Um, they did this without permission. They got sued. I think they, I think they reached some sort of agreement where they're going to distribute like two hundred million dollars or something. A lot of money. I'm sure Facebook doesn't care because they're worth like billions of billions of dollars. So they probably couldn't care less about you know to a measly two hundred million dollars or whatever the amount of money is. It could be significantly more or less than that. But my point is. Uh, they, they did that without people's permission, and that's terrible. Uh, and because they're Facebook, they probably, the people that got affected got a quick notification. Oh, by the way, just a small, tiny thing. Um, we got sued for, <clears throat> you know, maybe <clears throat> stealing your face and using facial recognition without your permission. Uh, we just want you to hit this OK button and ignore that. And most people won't read it. They just see some sort of giant prompt, and they're like, oh, yeah, sure, whatever. And they hit OK because they don't care about this notice they just want to hit okay i agree without reading anything which you shouldn't do <laughs> but they'll they'll go out of the way and make it super long like any typical you know 
government or large corporation thing. They'll make the statement super, super long, have you scroll all the way to the bottom because they know nobody's going to read it and then hit okay so you can continue using their product. Uh, and then what they did is you doing that, you let them use their obligation to the government that, oh, we notified the person that, you know, we were misusing their information. They hit the okay button, continued using Facebook and they didn't care. And the very small amount of people that did read the entire thing were like, hey, wait a minute, what, you use my information? And they found, a, you know, they were able to find out how to partake in the, you know, settlement. And now those people are going to receive, I think, uh, I think it's, I think, because that, that we're getting that money soon. I, the reason I say we're is I, I took, our part took in that, uh, I was one of those people that was affected. And I think it's like, $400 per person to everyone that partook in the class action lawsuit. So that's like, hey, I'm going to get a check from Facebook for $400 because they use my face. I'm still kind of upset because now I guess Facebook has, you know, facial recognition of my face and that's kind of uncool, but hey, $400, I guess it's worth it, but that's maybe something that people didn't know. Uh, so yeah, there's some laws uh, like that, that's a local law. So, you know, if you live in Indiana, that might not apply to you. If there's no state law that's preventing you from, or preventing Facebook from stealing information like that, uh, there's really nothing protecting you. It's, you know, there's there's laws on the, usually on the state and federal level that protect people's privacy, but there's not too much because there is a lot of money in selling information. Uh, so, so this be mindful of the information you provide to websites and apps and acknowledge what these companies will do with it. Pretty much anytime you create an account, Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, any account, uh, you could be, you just got an iPhone. Most people's iPhones, you have an Apple ID. You create your Apple ID. If you have a Snapchat, you have an Instagram. Uh, not just phone apps, but let's say you have a uh, you know, LinkedIn, all right? A lot, a lot of people have a LinkedIn account. Uh, they ask for a lot of information. They want your name. They would like your address. Some of them want your address. Uh, and if they don't want your address, if it's like a, you have an Amazon account, you have to mention Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. They want your billing address. They want to know where you live. They want to know your full name. You know, some of these, some of these depending on what it is, let's say you have a, uh, you do banking online, you know? Uh, Chase and, you know, uh, JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, uh, you got, you know, any of these, they want, now they want even more. Now they want your social security number. They want your tax ID. You know, they want like actual information. It's like, whoa, that's, you know, now I'm giving out a lot of information. And if you check and you're on Chase's website, maybe you're safe with giving your social security number to Chase on their website. And you are. And they're required to tell you what they're doing with the information. And usually they'll do it right underneath the form that you're filling out on the internet. Uh, and it'll usually tell you, like, if you're on Chase's website, like, we need your social security number. We need this to meet federal requirements. We do not keep and store this information. This is a verifying, we need this to verify who you are. The information is immediately deleted. They're required to tell you that. If they don't tell you it immediately, it's usually stored in some sort of agreement way at the bottom of the page. That's like 500 pages long, because obviously the federal government doesn't allow places to store people's social security numbers. That's protected by the federal government. Like when I said, uh, usually uh, local, state, or federal government, you know, they'll have these regulations in place to keep certain information out of reach of, you know, anything other than the service that you're using or, you know, the government or a bank that you're, you know, working with. But that doesn't necessarily apply to things like, you know, how, how, how important is your social security number compared to you looking up the price of a, uh, you know, uh, Tesla used, you know, or something like that. You will, you maybe, oh, you know, I want to use Tesla. I want an electric car for some reason. So I Google what's the price of a used Tesla you know, they're storing that information. And I might be thinking, okay, what do I care? They're storing that information, big deal. What are they gonna do with that information? But they actually do quite a bit with that information. All right, so your information is now theirs. Oh, this is, this is a fun one. So by making an account, clicking yes onto an agreement, typically you're handing over all legal ownership of information, photos, messages, or anything that you provide on social media. I did forget about this part. So we'll get back to what I was gonna talk about. 
Um, this is fun. So if you, let's say you're on vacation, you take your phone. Most people have their phone. They take pictures of their phone. You see, I got a really fancy phone with a fancy camera. You don't even need a fancy camera, but let's, let's not even say you're taking a picture on your phone. Uh, let's say you're a photographer. You have a very fancy camera. You take a picture of uh, the Chicago skyline and you uh, put it on Facebook. Hey, look at this beautiful picture I took. Um, well, that's no longer your picture. And I'm sure your $12,000 camera that you then went onto your car and drove and, you know, rush hour traffic, you know, off the expressway to go to downtown Chicago and then went to the, you know, planetarium to get this gorgeous skyline shot uh, that you're, you know, you, that's no longer yours. Because you posted it on Facebook, Facebook has an agreement that says you are unable to post copywritten material, even if it's your own. And uh, with, with cert certain restrictions, unless you're like a business or you have explicit permission from Facebook, uh, but you're not allowed to post copywritten or trademark material on Facebook. And if you're not posting copywritten or trademark material on Facebook, anything you do post instantly becomes there and Facebook has full ownership of it. And so if you took a picture, and you put it on Facebook, that's now Facebook's. Uh, and that was, you know, I in this circumstance, I was saying you're a professional photographer and use a fancy camera. Now let's use the you and me normal people uh, example. You took a picture on vacation and you put it on Facebook. That's now Facebook's. Facebook owns that picture legally. And I'm sure that applies to a lot of you. You might have pictures of yourself. You might have pictures that you take, uh, took on vacation, pictures of your house, pictures of your car, whatever. Yes, legally, that's Facebook's. Facebook owns that. They are, they are the full owner of that. You, you are surrendering full ownership of that. Uh, that's a lot of people don't know that. They do tell you that that's how that works and they're big fancy terms of service or their privacy agreement. And almost nobody reads it because it's 500 pages long and they don't care to know what happens with that. Uh, now, how often does Facebook as a corporation, how often do they, uh, how often do they like use the, you know, in this example, back to the famous photographer, you know, you're a professional photographer, you take a picture of the Chicago skyline, you put it on Facebook. What's the likelihood that Mark Zuckerberg or, you know, a Facebook official or Facebook as a company is going to steal that picture of the Chicago skyline that I took as a photographer and then start selling it? They're probably not going to, that they that's not what they do. Uh, more or less the reason why they want full ownership of pictures that's put on their platform is so when there's an issue on their platform regarding privacy, they could just instantly murder any privacy concerns. Let me give you an example. Let's say you post a picture of yourself on Facebook. All right, very simple. You take a picture of yourself, you have a picture of yourself, you put it on Facebook, and now somebody stole that picture and they opened the Facebook account, they're impersonating you, all right? Uh, now they have that uh, photo. Now you're concerned, somebody's impersonating you. If you go to Facebook and say, somebody stole my picture, they will not care. They won't care because they'll say, oh, well, that's not your picture to begin with, now that's our picture. Uh, as for impersonating you, they're not allowed to do that and they will take action. But if you, if you tell Facebook, hey, somebody stole my picture, they won't care. They'll sleep, they'll ignore them, they'll be like, we couldn't care less that somebody stole your picture. Technically, it's not your picture to begin with, it belongs to us and we will not care at all whatsoever. Uh, but yeah, if, if you go to them and you say somebody's impersonating me, then they'll start taking action to make sure that they get removed from Facebook and they get penalized for that. Uh, but yeah, that also means that if you take a, back to the photographer picture, you take this picture of the Chicago skyline and then one of my friends steals the picture and says, hey, look at this picture I took of the Chicago skyline. I'm like, wait a minute, that's my picture. I really can't go to Facebook and say they stole my picture because if I do, Facebook will be like, okay, um, well, that who cares? That's not your picture. That's Facebook's picture. You posted it. And now that you posted it on Facebook, other people can use it. Uh, and that's how that works. It's no longer your property. It's Facebook's property. And so Facebook will use their own set of rules on their property, which is no longer yours. And that's kind of sad. And you might argue, well, what if it's a copywritten picture? What if, I, what if my trademark's on it? 
Remember, then you get in trouble because you're not allowed to post copyright material unless you have explicit permission from Facebook. And you got to go through with Facebook and you got to be, oh, okay, you know. So, you know, and, and most of the time, Facebook, they'll let you use, you know, if you, if you copyright or trademark your own photos and you go through it, usually, yeah, then Facebook, if you contact Facebook, hey, they're using my content and I have proof that it's copyright material by me, yeah, then they'll go after the person. But usually that's not the case. Usually you're taking a picture on your phone and you just immediately put it on social media like Facebook or Twitter. And it's not just Facebook where this, I'm talking about Facebook a lot. Pretty much every social media platform is exactly the same. They don't care pretty much anything you post to them. And it doesn't even have to be a picture. It could be, you could be making an official statement on, on Twitter or on Facebook. And that whole thing that you've quoted that's yours isn't yours, that whole rant or article or, you know, whatever you put, any post that you make to Facebook, that's Facebook's property. You are basically giving Facebook stuff for other people that you're friends with or that, you know, that you're allowing to see usually the public, you're allowing them to look at it, but it's Facebook's property. A lot of people don't realize that that's how that works. That's, that's kind of scary to think about. And uh, that's just one of the many things that people do just all the time on social media, and they don't realize where this information is going. So that's that's something that I thought uh, I should mention. That's kind of kind of kind of concerning. So I'll go. Or did I skip? No. Private information and posts are not necessarily private. So now we're going to talk about like literal privacy, like who who can see who can see what. All right. Obviously, if I'm making a post on Facebook, Facebook could see my post, okay? Uh, if I'm Google searching something, that information of me looking something up on Google, obviously Google knows what I'm Googling. They're Google, I'm, I'm, go I'm on their website. Of course, Google knows what I'm Googling. I'm on Google.com, why wouldn't they? If I look someone up on Facebook, who knows that information? Well, obviously Facebook does, but who else does? So we're gonna crack down on that. Uh, websites typically are given quite a bit of information just for using their services uh, or visiting their website, such as your location. So if you go on Facebook, rather if you go on like Twitter, like on your phone or even on your computer, they will, they will usually ask for your location. They're no, they're no longer allowed to just take your location. Uh, you might notice this if you go on certain this is like almost any website. If you go to like a restaurant's website or even better, you go to like a car dealership or like a uh, car manufacturer's website, you go to Ford.com, all right? This is a really good example. Ford.com, you go to Ford.com and you want to look any information up on Ford's website. You, know, you, you want to know about the new, I don't know, some new Ford car. You want to look up information on it. You go to Ford's website. The first thing they'll ask you is what's your zip code? They want to know where you live. Uh, why are you, why, why do they care where you live? You're not looking to buy a car. You just want more information on a car you saw online. Nope, they won't give it to you. Please give us a zip code. They want information. Why? Because the very first thing on their mind is they want to start profiling you and creating this profile of, you know, creating a digital version of you that they can start selling stuff to more or less. That's, that's what they're, that's the end game goal is they want to sell you stuff. Um, they're able to do it very efficiently with the information that they either take from you or they buy from other companies that are taking information from you. So, uh, for example, like your location, like I said, there isn't always a warning or a pop-up agreement that asks, I know Ford's website, you might have to play around and you have to be careful because some, you know, you don't know if you're on, if, if you were to try this yourself, go on Ford's website, you got to make sure you're not on a dealership's website. And half the time, if you're on a dealership's website, the dealership will do the same thing. They'll ask for your zip code because they're thinking they're going to sell you something. And their end game goal is to sell you something. They, they want to sell you a car. And so they want something in like your location. But it's not just, you know, car dealerships or car manufacturers. It could be you using Instagram, using Twitter, using Facebook. They'll ask, hey, can we have your permission? And they'll explain why they want your, your permission for location or for, you know, uh, if it's like Instagram or Snapchat, which are, social media platforms designed around cameras on phones. Uh, it'll ask for your permission on your microphone. It'll ask for permission on your uh, camera. If you have a uh, Amazon Echo Dot, you know, the little 
Alexa thing, or you have a Google Home Mini, uh, which is a little thing where you can say like, you know, hello, Google, or, you know, okay, Google or whatever. Uh, or the, uh, what's the other one I'm missing? There's a couple, there's a couple digital assistants, you know, like the little smart speakers you have in your home. People have like an Alexa device. And you say, Alexa, what's the weather like? And Alexa responds back. Amazon asks for your permission when you set that up. Oh, we need permission if you hook it up with your phone. Oh, we need your permission to use the microphone. We need your permission to access your location. And they'll explain it. Well, we need access to the microphone because how else is the device going to hear you say, Alexa, can you tell me what the weather is? They'll say, oh, we need your location because how will they know that what the, what you're talking about when you ask what's the weather you know they'll if you give them microphone access in your location they'll know that you said alexa what's the weather and they'll know your location that you live in you know orland park or wherever you live uh, but you'll say yes i agree and ignore the giant 500 page document that amazon has that says yeah we do need the microphone so you hear us say Alexa, and they do need you, we do need your location so we know where you live for things like that. But we're also going to sell that information of your location to other companies like Facebook and Google so they know where you live if they don't already know where you live. And on top of that, we're also going to intermittently sometime throughout the year turn on the microphone when you don't know it's on and listen in on conversations and have analysts determine what you're talking about and what kind of conversations you have with people and try to determine how many people live in your house. Uh, and if that seems scary, like I just pulled it out of thin air, uh, I didn't, that's why it was very specific and they do do that and they are allowed to. And uh, the government's totally okay with that. They're totally allowed to do that. They're totally allowed to do that. And you gave them permission to, because when they were telling you, hey, we need the microphone for obviously, because how else would they hear, you know, Alexa, whatever, you're not only agreeing to your Alexa being able to hear you talk when you say Alexa this or Alexa that, you're also agreeing to them pretty much using your device as like a, in my personal opinion, as like a spying device. And they use it as a spying device so they can gather information so they could sell it to advertisers, uh, which is scary, but I mean, it's better than them using it for something evil, uh, unless you think selling stuff is evil, in which case, I mean, then they're probably the evilest corporation ever. It's Amazon. That's their entire business is selling things and information. Uh, that's why they're worth so much money. But yeah, so that's how that works. Uh, but other than information that you don't see going away like that, because that's, that's information that's being taken from you that you're not aware of. How about information that you know you're willingly giving out? So you make a post on social media. Uh, hey, I'm in, uh, I'm in vacation in Puerto Rico today. And you set the post to private on Facebook. Because on Facebook, you typically have three options. You can set privacy settings. So individual posts can only be seen by you. So no one else can see it. So it's just you, which by the way, isn't true either. Uh, Facebook can always see whatever you post. So it would be, be between Facebook and you, uh, but none of your friends and the public, other people couldn't see those posts. Uh, but because Facebook could see it, you know, when you say I'm in, you make a post, well, it's the same post on Facebook for all these scenarios, all right? I'm vacationing in Puerto Rico today. It's so sunny and nice out. So uh, you make it private. Only you can see it. So your friends can't see it. People you're friends with on Facebook can't see it. Uh, people in the, the whole world can't see it. Only you and Facebook can see it. And so what that means is your information of, oh, I am in Puerto Rico. You obviously know you're in Puerto Rico. You're the one that's there. Facebook will take that information, sell it to I don't know, a giant advertising conglomerate like Google. Uh, Google will go to their advertising division. They bought the information of, oh, face, we bought information from Facebook about you. You made a Facebook post that says that you were in Puerto Rico. And uh, we are now going to sell the information that you're in Puerto Rico to, you know, I don't know, some 
hotel in Puerto Rico, right? Or something, or some tourist attraction place in Puerto Rico. They're gonna sell that information. They're gonna, they're gonna go to the tourist attraction or the advertising, the advertising targeting company, which is a thing that exists. They'll go to them and be like, hey, we'll sell you information. We know a bunch of people that are in Puerto Rico on vacation right now. We bought information from Google. We bought the information from Facebook. And they're, they're like for several million dollars or you know, however much money it is, we'll give you all these people that we know that are vacationing in uh, Puerto Rico this week. And they'll sell the uh, information to them and they'll pull a bunch of tourist places and they'll eventually end up on your Facebook. Uh, how does that work? When you're scrolling through Facebook, you get advertisements every so often, right? So you made a post saying, hey, I'm enjoying my time in Puerto Rico. And you'll scroll down, you'll get an advertisement for some, you know, fancy beach that costs money to go to in Puerto Rico. And it's like, oh, that's cool. How did they know I was in Puerto Rico? Wait a minute, that's pretty interesting. And you can have your location turned off. So Facebook isn't using your location information. And you're like, that's weird. My location settings are turned off. And that post was only for me to see. How, how does this advertisement know I'm in Puerto Rico? Well, it's because your private post for just you, Facebook can see, Facebook sold it to Google. Google gave it to their advertising company. That advertising company moved it to another advertising company, which is affiliated with the beach in Puerto Rico. And then that eventually made itself all the way back to Facebook and Facebook used it to, you know, and it's not just Facebook. Uh, you could, you know, make that post on Facebook. I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm enjoying my vacation. And then you go on Google and you find an ad on Google on the side that's for a hotel in Puerto Rico. And it's like, how would Google know that I'm in Puerto Rico? I made that post on Facebook. I've never used Google yet. And it's because Google bought it from Facebook. And so they share information with each other because they make money. Because, and if, at that point in time, Google, Google and Facebook have already made their money. Google doesn't care whether you go on the, you know, fancy hotel that they're advertising or not. They made their money selling it to the company that, you know, is affiliated with the hotel. So Google has the easy job of, oh, they just sell the information, done deal. And then the hotel is in hopes that maybe you'll uh, go on to the hotel. And of course, they, they're not hoping for just you to do it. They sell millions, billions of people's information. And it's proven effective to work. It's very effective to work. They have these giant computers that determine who is more likely or less likely to click on advertisements or links or spend money. They get more tech targeted advertising and that's how they generate money. And that's how Google, a search engine is now worth like, you know, $700 billion. That's not even, they're, they're, they're over like a trillion dollars now. That's why they're worth so much money. They have it down to an art. They sell people's information, it's pretty good. So that's if you had a, a Facebook thing set to private. Let's say you have it set to friends only. Uh, if you set something to friends only, still everything I just said would apply. And on top of that, uh, your friends could see it and uh, they, could, they could post on it. Uh, sometimes there's a setting on Facebook that's like friends of friends. So your friends can see posts that you send and their friends can also see your posts that you send. So friends of your friends can also see posts. Uh, and if they were to say, you know, they were to mention somehow, your friend were to mention somehow, hey, you're in Puerto Rico, that information will be taken. They'll figure out that they're friends with you. They'll figure out who you are. And that information will go to, you know, advertising uh, algorithms even faster. Uh, and then obviously stuff that's open to the public, that that means anyone can read what you post and then, then getting away from like the whole advertising stuff uh stuff that you say is public that probably i i personally wouldn't recommend doing from a privacy level um uh, objective because if you look at you know you make a post i don't know maybe you were mad at a you you had a bad experience at like a bakery I don't know why I keep mentioning a bakery. I'll, I'll say something else, I don't, just a restaurant. You went to a diner, you had a bad experience there, right? And so you go on Facebook and you make a big rant about how bad the place is and that you never wanna go there ever again, right? Okay, so you do that, sure. Uh, and you set it to public because you want everyone to know. 
you're mad and you want everyone to know that this diner is just treating you horribly, you know? Uh, so you set it to public and you send it. And now it's five years later and now the place is great. Uh, maybe by then you've forgotten that, you know, it was, you know, so terrible or it was bad. Or maybe the, maybe the business did really bad because everyone thought it was horrible and it went out of business. Well, when you eventually, let's say you're looking for a job five years down the line, that employer might go on your Facebook and they'll see five years ago that you wanted this big rant. And maybe you said some not so nice things on the rant about that diner you went to that doesn't even exist anymore. And they might decide not to hire you because they're like, man, this person got really angry over the, this experience with this diner. You know, maybe we, we shouldn't hire this person. And they, you know, they would never tell you that. They'd be sorry we went with other people, you know, the decline, you know, you don't get the job. You won't know why. Uh, and it's because you made this post that you don't even, you already forgot about. You were just mad at the time you made this post on Facebook. So you got to watch out what the kind of things that you say on social media and uh, who can access it. And even if, you, and that, that even from like a privacy level, you could have solved that issue by simply uh, setting the privacy from public to friends or just me sometimes. And this is where it's like, oh, sometimes how does this work? Well, sometimes uh, information you post can, you know how I said it for advertising, it can be bought to from companies to other companies. So if it was set to just me, so you're the only person that's able to view the post that you sent, uh, Facebook still able to view it. Well, some employers, usually really big ones. So unless you're looking to get a job at Google or Amazon, and Amazon's a big employer, so and so is Google. So something to think about, they will buy that information and they won't buy it for advertising purposes. I mean, they will buy it for advertising purposes, but that's not the only thing they'll buy it for. They'll buy it so they can see what you posted and they'll be like, oh, this person went on a big rant. They had it set to private so only their friends could see the big rant, but we bought that information from Facebook and we can see that they're probably a very angry person. We don't want to hire them. And then Amazon won't hire you because of a private post you made on Facebook. Something to think about, very sneaky. Again, it's Facebook's property. They can do what they want. And so it's like, oh, but I, I set it to private. That's like a inside Facebook thing. You're not declaring it private to the world as a legal thing. No one else is allowed to do it. And they're giant terms of service. Hey, it's our property. We can do what we want with it. You're making a post. That's our property. It being private to you means on our platform, no one else can see it. We have no problem selling it to other people. It's our property. We can do whatever we want with it. And so that's kind of how they operate. And that's how other social media platforms operate. And that's also how search engines operate when you type anything in. Uh, so it's something to think about. Cookies and advertising profiles. So I was talking about back to this advertising. So what they'll do is they'll create a profile of you over time. You know, so uh, you look up a bunch of stuff throughout your entire life, not even your entire life. Let's say you just started using the internet a year ago. You love Googling stuff. You love going on Yahoo. You love going on Bing, right? You look up a lot of stuff because why wouldn't you? It's amazing. Uh, they store all that information. They're able to pretty much, they're pretty much able to paint a really good picture about you. They'll know what kind of foods you like over time. They'll know what kinds of stuff you go on the internet and buy. They'll know the kinds of things you look up. They'll know what you're good at. They'll probably know where you work or what industry you're in. They know a lot of very cool stuff. Uh, I could actually show you right now, by law, the federal government forces them to tell you information regarding your, uh, your profile. So if I go to like Google privacy settings, I'm on my phone right now, I'm going to my privacy checkup. So I'm going to sign in. Uh, and this is a thing, you could look this up. If you go on Google yourself and you look up privacy, uh, privacy settings, they are actually required by law to show you the profile they create for you. Oh, I have to, I have an authenticator, hold up. I have to put in a password. Uh, there we go. And so they're required to show you the profile that they create. And the profile they create is a combination of information that you give out on their platform or information they bought from other people or other companies, and they'll create a profile of 
basically who you are or who they think you are, and they'll use that to determine what advertisements you get on the internet and what they want to sell you and the way that the internet is. They basically will tailor your browsing experience on the internet to you in the best way to suit other companies they're affiliated with and in the way that makes them the most money. Uh, so really you're being taken for a ride. It's pretty great. Uh, let's see, add personalization. So if I go to add personalization, just based off, I don't wanna see how much of this I wanna, I'm actually willing to give out, but like, uh, so you'll see if you can see my screen on my phone, it'll, it says add personalization. It might be, might be backwards for you. This says add personalization. And it has a, a bunch of profiles, all these different things that I could scroll down, a whole list of stuff. It, I, I've not given Google that much information, but just based off of things I've Googled the past year and information they bought from other social media platforms or other search engines, they know I'm male, speak English, I'm 18 to 24 years old. They uh, know that I'm willing to buy clothes, uh, automotive equipment. They know I'm big into banking, books and literature, car rentals, that's wrong. I've, I've never rented a car in my life, but they're trying their best. Cats, I have cats, they know I have cats. I don't know how they knew that. I, I, I don't remember Googling stuff about cats, but they know I have cats. Uh, classical music. I like classical music. They know I'm in a classical music. Uh, animation, uh, video games, computer and video games, computer hardware, uh, fast food, stock market. They, they like know investing, job industry, technology industry, job industry, library science. They, they know they have like a perfect, they have like a perfect picture of it. They know like everything. They know my job. They know they know they have my location of where I live. I'm not going to share that, but they know exactly where I live. Uh, they know the kind of things I buy. They know the kinds of clothes I wear. They know the kinds of vehicles I like. They know what game console I have in my house. They know the kind of art I like. They know the brand of car I drive. I, how would they know that? And this is all stuff. It's, in, it's called Google ad settings. And if you have a Google account, they have like a Gmail, you can look it up yourself. Uh, it's personalized uh, advertising and they're required to be able to show you that. Uh, they either are forced to by law show you the information they store on you or they can't have personalized advertising, which is doesn't really make them that much money. And yes, in case you're wondering, you can turn that off. You can turn it off so they can't see that, but then you won't have relevant ads which is nice sometimes. Having relevant ads is nice because then at least when you get advertisements, they're ads that are relevant to you. But if you're a kind of person that says, oh, well, I don't need relevant ads. I don't care about ads at all. Or I have an ad blocker. You could turn that off entirely. It's just when you do get ads, it's not going to be if you're like a, you're into big American luxury sedans. You won't get American luxury sedan as an advertisement. You get might get an advertisement on fresh kale and you might not care in the world about fresh kale. Yeah, you don't, maybe you don't buy produce and you're not in the market to buy fresh kale. They'll just give you an advertisement of random stuff because you're, you've disabled personalized advertising. But by default, everyone has personalized advertising. They buy as much information as possible. They create that kind of profile and they sell you specific stuff. And it's not just Google, it's Facebook, it's Snapchat, Instagram, uh, Bing, which is Microsoft. Uh, Yahoo, everyone does it. Every company does it. It's how they make money. Targeted, I kind of went over this. So, but we can we can go in more into detail. So these companies will profile you based on information that they buy and have an AI cater marketing strategies to sell you stuff. Yeah. So again, the, there's a you know billions of people using the internet. Uh, obviously, it would take far too long for a person to figure all this out. So they leave a computer to figure it out. They they have computers that are super, super smart and a bunch of AI figure out, okay, this person likes this and all this other stuff. Our algorithm shows that 95% of people that also liked all this stuff are willing to spend money on this stuff because they have such a wide net. They have billions of users worth of information. They know what works. They know what sells. They know what kinds of stuff to sell to what kinds of people. 
they have all the data required to make them insane amounts of money. All right, it's very scary because they're, they have, because they've cast such a wide net and they get so much information back. They can use that to make even more money and get even more information. It's very scary. Uh, it's also kind of cool. So uh, yeah, ads by Google and uh, ads on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube are tailored for you and based off of information that you give, like I was saying. And so here we have two advertisements. So uh, let's say uh, I am I see an advertisement for a uh, this, this luxury car here, right? It's a German mid-size luxury car, right? Uh, and I click on it and I'm like, oh, this is pretty interesting. And I ask for more information on it. And then I click off of it. And then I go onto my phone, I'm gonna get the advertisement directly underneath it. They're direct competitor. And it's another mid-size, you know, German luxury sedan. And it's like, I, I'm probably inclined to click on it. Why? Because obviously I was interested in the one, one above it. And they're, they're both mid-size German luxury sedans, you know, and it obviously doesn't have to be just with cars. It could be uh, anything, you know, you, you have a, uh, I don't know, you're looking up, you want some sort of, uh, you're looking up a type of, uh, I don't know, washcloth. I don't know. You're, you're looking at the. You try. You want to find information on the Sham Wow. All right. I don't know. Uh, and you you want to buy the Sham Wow, but oh, I'm no longer inclined to buy the Sham Wow. It's too expensive. So you stop looking up the Sham Wow. You go on Amazon. You get an advertisement on the side. Oh, we're trying to sell you the Mega Chamois, which isn't the Sham Wow. Uh, and oh, it's just as good as the Sham Wow, and it costs half as much. We thought you might like this because. We just did. Of course, they know you like it because they bought the information of you looking up the ShamWow earlier and they realized that you probably didn't want to buy it because it was too much money. So now Amazon's willing to sell you a cheaper one that's just as good. And if the price was the problem, you're probably going to buy this cheaper alternative. Of course you are. And that's how Amazon makes money. So that's, that's pretty cool. So basically, if you look something up, you might find relevant things in advertising. If you look up a specific thing or you click on a specific advertisement, you're going to start getting advertisements that are based around what you do. Uh, you can kind of trick the system if you wanted to. So you could use that to your advantage. You can look stuff up that you'd never care about. Let's say you don't have a care in the world for, uh, I don't know, umbrellas. You could care less about looking up umbrellas. You could just start looking up a bunch of different types of umbrellas on Google a bunch of different umbrellas on Yahoo and start looking up umbrellas on uh, Facebook for some reason. Then when you go on Amazon, you're gonna get a bunch of advertisements trying to sell you an umbrella on Amazon. You could try it yourself, it's pretty funny. Usually it might take a day or two. Uh, most of the time it's instantaneous. It's like pretty wild and it's like, huh, how does Amazon know I'm in the market for a uh, you know, umbrella? You know. And obviously you're tricking the system for it to think that you could do that intentionally just to see how fast some of the information is bought and sold and then immediately pops back up in your face. It's pretty cool. Uh, so private browsing options. So there's a couple of ways that you can get around this. And there's a couple of ways that you can kind of just browse more securely. I was talking earlier about how like without you signing in information that you use can still be used to profile you. That's not true if you enable some sort of private browsing. So uh, Google Chrome, uh, Firefox, and Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, uh, Safari, they all have their own private browsing options. The most popular one that people are, uh, so they actually have right here. So we have private browsing. I think that's just what it's called for most things, either private browsing or private window. Uh, in private, I think, is either Firefox or Internet Explorer or Edge, and uh, incognito mode is Google Chrome. Uh, if you enable those, it's like an option in your, in your settings for your, uh, not even in your settings, it's like an option in Google Chrome or your web browser. It'll have a version of uh, that browser where it doesn't save information to that browser. And so when you start looking up a bunch of stuff for umbrellas, when you close out of it and you reopen the Chrome window, either normally or back into private browsing, that information wasn't stored and 
the information of the device you're currently on. While Google knows that someone looked up stuff about umbrellas, they don't necessarily know it's you. They'll know your IP address. And so they'll, uh, they'll know that your IP address, someone with your IP address looked up umbrellas. So you still might get an advertisement, but most of the time they'll be like, we don't recognize this device. We know the device that was looking up umbrellas was in private mode. So really we'd be you know, picking at straws, trying to figure out who it was. We're not gonna bother profiling someone who's on private browsing. So they don't even bother with that. And so it says it only prevent your own computer and browser from keeping information. They can still track you and use information to uh, you know, monitor you uh, and uh, for advertising purposes, but information that's stored in your browser won't be there. This also means that uh, this private browsing won't save browser history. It won't save uh, settings of stuff that's uh, saved on your, sometimes passwords are saved on to uh, like automatically, you got a, like a really long bank password. If you're on Google Chrome, the first time you put in that bank password, it'll ask you, hey, do you want us to save this password? And you might hit yes. Uh, if, you, if you're in private browsing, it'll never save any of those passwords. It doesn't save, automatically save information or automatically fill information. A lot of web browsers are starting to do that for convenience. I would never do that uh, just because I don't want as like a security reason. That information is, by the way, not usually stored. Uh, it's not stored on the internet. That's always stored on the device itself. And private browsing prevents it from being stored on your device itself. And while it still can be monitored on the internet, it's not used for like really for malicious purposes on the internet. Search engine. So we went through Google, didn't talk about Bing too much, but really no different. But Google and Bing are backed by massive corporations that will immediately use searches uh, to tailor advertising. I was, like I was saying, you start looking up all this, you know, big companies, all, you're, you go on Google or Bing or Yahoo, and you start looking up a bunch of stuff on umbrellas, Amazon, another big company, they all use AI and super intelligent, super fast algorithms you're gonna almost immediately start getting advertisements for umbrellas the second you start looking up stuff on umbrellas on other companies' websites. Uh, that's just how it works. And that's kind of scary. Uh, they'll, yeah, they'll search, they'll uh, tailor advertising based on your previous search history. And they'll also sell your information to other companies to do the same thing. Uh, not all search engines sell your information though. DuckDuckGo is a fantastic example of a search engine that protects users' privacy by not selling any information and not profiling their users. So you might have heard of the company DuckDuckGo. You might be like, like figuring out why do people use this just for that reason. So search engines do exist. I did say almost all. I think I corrected myself way earlier. I said not all of them. We'll get to that. DuckDuckGo is an example of a company that doesn't do that. They're great. If you're concerned about being profiled, you don't want to use a search engine that sells your information. You just want to look something up. You don't want all this weird, creepy back-end corporation making trillions of dollars off of a lot of people's information. You don't have to use Google. You could use DuckDuckGo, great search engine. Uh, just know they won't make search results and advertisements. They won't have them tailored to you. It's just gonna be raw search engine. You know what, some people do want that. But there are some benefits to uh, Google, Yahoo, and Bing being tailored to you because they know almost everything about you. When you look up something on Google, and your friend looks up the exact same thing on Google, you guys are going to get similar results depending on what you're looking up. If you look up amazon.com on Google, the first result for both of you guys is gonna be Amazon. That's a big thing. But like if you look up uh, umbrella companies and then your friend who lives in Michigan looks up umbrella companies, if you're both on DuckDuckGo, you're gonna get the same results probably. But you on Google looking up umbrellas you're going to get results for you living here. And I'm just going to say for me, it'd be umbrella companies in Orland Park. But your friend who lives in Michigan will get umbrella companies in Michigan. And maybe I like super high-end $100 Rolls Royce level, you know, <laughs> umbrellas. I want some really fancy luxury umbrella. And they, they know I'm worth $5 billion or, you know, whatever, they, for the sake of the example. I'm a billionaire. I only like diamond coated umbrellas. Google will know this person's a billionaire. We're gonna give them example. We're gonna have search results for high end umbrellas. But my friend who's a normal person in Michigan, they won't get that at the, their first 40 results will be umbrellas 
companies near him, Norwell Umbrellas. Mine will be umbrella companies near me that are coded in diamonds. And so we'll get personalized results. And sometimes that matters because then I get the results that I want and they get the results that they want. But in DuckDuckGo, you wouldn't get that. And obviously I might seem super impractical, but sometimes it is practical. Like if you're looking up, uh, if you're looking up uh, mechanics for your car, your car broke down, you're trying to find a mechanic. Google, this is gonna sound scary, Google profiles you if you're logged in or you're not even logged in, they just have built up a profile long enough you, from your device on your IP address. They'll know where you live. They'll probably know your income based off of information they buy or they just kind of figured out or guessed. And they're not right all the time, but they'll know your income. They'll know how much money you're probably willing to spend on a mechanic. And they'll know the close mechanics that are near your location. And so when you look up a mechanic, Google will kind of help you out and like push up the mechanics that you probably want up to the top of the list. And so you might be thinking, Google's great. I get, you know, instant responses of like, you know, super, well, yeah, because they're using their algorithm to figure out, okay, you want this mechanic. They're cheap. Don't worry. We know you, you know, you're, you've had a bad year. You, you know, maybe you've been unemployed the past year. Google might know that. And I need mean, your first result will be the cheapest mechanic that's good, that's in your location and near your area. And so that'll be like the first result. And that's pretty cool that Google does that. And that's a result of their personalized advertising and their profiling. So it's not like they're profiling a super evil or anything. It's, it's cool having personalized ad. That's why I had, I was saying, I, I was showing you my personalized uh, advertising profile on Google. I could turn it off. Uh, why would I? I either get random ads or I get ads that are specifically tailored to me. It's my choice whether or not I actually go out, go out and buy stuff, but I figure if I'm gonna get advertisements either way, I might as well have the advertisements relevant to stuff I like, you know, might as well. That's my opinion. A lot of people might have differing opinions. And if you have a differing opinion, there's alternatives. You could turn off the advertising profiles on like Google. And it's not just Google, Facebook has one too. Uh, if you want to find your Facebook advertising profiles where they make up all your stuff, uh, you can look that up on Facebook. I forgot how to get to it, uh, but you can look up Facebook advertising profiles. And if you go to Facebook, you can, if you have a Facebook account, you can see your advertising profile. It, it has, again, they'll know, they'll make a guess of your income, your age, your location, uh, whether you're politically left or politically right. They'll, they'll, they'll make a whole profile. It's very scary. And you don't have to tell them anything. They'll figure it out over time. The longer, the more information they buy, the more information you give, and the longer your account has existed, the more accurate their profile of you is going to be. So that's scary. And if you don't like that, you could turn those off or you can find an alternative. Find an alternative that doesn't use information. DuckDuckGo is one of those alternatives. They just straight up don't sell. They, they're not in the game for advertising or making money off of information. They're just a search engine. And there's plenty of alternatives look like that. You can look up DuckDuckGo uh, uh, companies like that are, that are like DuckDuckGo. Uh, I would say, funny enough, Google alternatives that are like DuckDuckGo. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of them. The only one that I, I can think of off the top of my head right now is DuckDuckGo and that's for a search engine. Uh, tips, uh, watch. Like I think I went over, over this before about the whole employer thing. Watch for what you say and post online. Remember, it could be there forever. Uh, if, even if you delete a post, Facebook's property, right? You're on Facebook, you delete something. Facebook might still keep a record of it. Why do they care? It's their information. They want to keep it. They can do that. Uh, but and if you delete something, obviously other people can't see it unless they already bought that information. They can see it forever then. Uh, there's usually nothing to worry about. Uh, just sort of watch what you say and post online. Know that it might not be yours that it might be there forever and that potentially everyone can see it. Know where your information is going and what's done with it. It went over, information is typically stored and used for like advertising. A lot of advertising stuff, a lot of information being sold, but that's where most, that's what most of the information is for us for advertising. Um, browse the web in private mode or incognito if you don't want information stored to your device. Uh, you want, you know, just to be a little bit more uh, safer and more secure. There is an alternative to being in private or incognito mode. I was saying that that's all on your, your device. 
you can, I was talking about IP address, they'll still have your IP address, they'll still know it's you and your location. Uh, you can change your IP address or you can spoof your IP address with something called a virtual private network. But that's not so much an internet privacy thing as in my opinion is a, 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 a internet security thing. And so this is a two part class. We're gonna go over internet security uh, two days from now on Thursday, and it's part two of this. And the internet uh, security will go over a virtual private network, which I think that's pretty important to go over. So if you want a, an even extra layer, that's even better than private mode or incognito mode, you could use a virtual private network. That'll stop everyone in their tracks. They don't know where you are, or who you are. Uh, we'll talk about that in part two. So I didn't include it here. I really could have included it into either part one or part two, but I decided to stick it into part two because this part's already pretty long explaining about advertising and whatnot. Minimize the amount of personal information, uh, personal information on social media. So just try to limit what information you give out. Uh, you know, have if you're not fond of these advertisements being super, you know, profiling you and whatnot. If you just straight up tell Google, here's what where I live and here's what I like. You're saving them the trouble and the money of having to profile you. Uh, I don't know why you'd do that unless you really liked personalized ads and they're gonna target you in such a way that they will try to squeeze you dry of money. You, uh, if you're totally unwilling to buy something on the internet, then I'm sure you don't care. Uh, but usually the people that are like that would be concerned about their information being out in the, in the internet anyway, so. Um, but yeah, something something to keep in mind. Just sort of stay safe, no privacy settings on social media, and uh, just acknowledge that your information isn't necessarily always private, even if it seems like it is. Uh, I went over a lot. If anyone has any questions, you can feel free to ask any questions. I, I will answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, we have some upcoming classes. You can see we have the interacting with the internet security class that's coming up two days from now on the 18th, that's a Thursday. Uh, and then next week we have the cutting the cord cable no more, very good class. I'd recommend everybody if you don't, if you're, uh, you don't have like a Netflix or a Hulu or a Disney plus subscription uh, or even like, you know, maybe you're paying too much money for cable and you don't use it that much or you do use it, but there's never anything to watch. Cable no more may be something for you. There's a lot of alternatives to cable. Cable's really expensive. Uh, it's also a lot of hassle where to set up and uh, deal with. Uh, and the alternatives are much cheaper. Some of them are free and it's it's just, I, it's awesome. Uh, I've, I've cut the cord, so to speak, on cable a little bit ago. Uh, I will never look back. Absolutely awesome, love it. Uh, cable's definitely going to die eventually don't know how soon it will but i mean it's it's going to die and if you want to learn more about that cable no more is for you on um, the 14th next month we have intro to wordpress about a month from now and then a uh, month after that we have microsoft word basics and a lot of people wanted a class on like more basic uh, stuff like microsoft word and excel and stuff we had an excel class but this is our microsoft word class it's a couple months from now uh, again my name is matthew montalvo I work at the Orland Park Public Library. This has been a presentation by the Orland Park Public Library. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask them at my email, uh, mmontalvo, M-O-N-T-A-L-V-O at orlandparklibrary.org. Uh, I'll answer as soon as I'm able. And uh, yeah, that's more or less it. Be sure to tune in to part two. Part two is in two days. We're gonna talk about uh, security which is more arguably more important than privacy. So yeah, thank you very much.